Greetings viewers, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be swapping out my seven day programmable Honeywell thermostat uh, that runs on batteries and I'm going to be replacing it with a T5 smart thermostat from Honeywell. And this could be controlled with an app, it has a whole bunch of different features, it's got Wi-Fi con connectivity, a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And we're gonna go and swap that out. Uh, my, so my house is two zones. So this is the main floor, and then upstairs is the other is the zone two. And what I'm going to be talking about in this video is some of the challenges that you will probably run into, maybe not always, uh, when it comes to swapping out the thermostat in your home. Down here in my basement, I have a pretty typical setup that you would normally find in most uh, residential homes. I have a fuel oil fired hot air furnace, and I also have a central air system, a three ton system that uh, it does the uh, forced cold air. And it's got two louver controls, a uh, two louver motor. So one louver here operates either heating or cooling, and then one uh, behind here actually operates zone one or zone two. Where I'm going to have a problem installing my Wi-Fi thermostat is because of the controller that runs the thermostats. It's a very old style type of controller that has been phased out for a number of years. My house was built in 2004, but it's from a company called EWC Controls. It's a model EWC-ST-2E, 2E standing for two zones, and it's located right on the side here. Not the best with the lighting, but basically here is the board that I am talking about. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that this was designed as a master and a slave thermostat controller. And it also has separate O and B wires. And that normally would not be used for a, a system like mine. And O and B is, is referring to the reversing valve in a heat pump setup. And since this is not a heat pump setup, it still requires the problem it, the, that's the rub really is the it still requires the o and the b wires even if you have a fuel oil fired furnace and a central air system because it'll actually have you needs those wires to tell this board to either run in cooling or heating mode and most if not all modern controllers to my understanding don't operate in that fashion anymore and this is the exact reason why this board is in is not compatible with most uh, all the modern thermostats so as you can see i have here on my screen the technical bulletin and i did call ewc controls and i left a message with them and told them my plight of what i was dealing with i got a call the very next morning and he, they and his name is john john thank you so much if you're watching this video uh, he went into a, a lot of detail and gave me the, he, he knew the exact problem that I was having with my old ST board and how I can actually use uh, uh, some tips on how to jumper the inside of the board to make it work with the digital thermostats that I have. But he said I would still run into a problem. It's not going to be a perfect setup because of the way that that board was designed. It's been phased out. Uh, he said the best bet would be for me to go and upgrade that board. So that's what I'm doing. And he also sent me this link here, which is in my description below. It is actually another technical bulletin on how to do this exact swap. It's from the old ST board over to the new NCM 300 zone control. And then it will go into detail on you know why the old version won't work and what needs to be done. And the whole install parameters up to and including uh, all the different wires that are on your old board here. Nice big picture and how those wires are just going to go right to the new board, and that's it. How to set your dip switches correctly based on your uh, setup. In this case, I have an HVAC, you know, forced hot air and cold air with the central air system. And this should be pretty straightforward, and I'm going to show everyone on how I'm doing it. It I haven't seen a YouTube video uh, detailing this process, although I don't think the process is too difficult. And if there's any questions, certainly give EWC a call. They'd be more than happy to help you out. The other thing, too, that I saw was that EWC has an online forum where people can actually post questions like this. And me being a big forum user in general, I really think that's a, a, an amazing feature that the, to be able to help in a customer service capacity. So, John, thank you so much, EWC. Really appreciate it. And I hope this video helps others. A quick note on the air temperature sensor. This particular board I bought off of eBay. It should be here in a few days. You're actually looking at it sideways. 
that air sensor would normally connect right here in uh, the top right hand corner and i did ask john about that and he sent me this submittal sheet that basically explains how to install it and it would be connected uh or at least it'd be sensing air coming off of the furnace or the central air system to make sure it's not too hot or cold basically and a lot of people don't seem to install them or they forget about it leave it in the box it only takes about 10 minutes to install I did tell him that the one that I, the board that I ordered didn't have, he says he can certainly send me a temperature probe, no problem. And uh, we're going to install that here too, just to make sure that we're getting the 100% of the efficiency that this board offers. And uh, that'll be part of the install as well. Well, I got the old board out and the new board is in. What I can tell you as far as running into this here, you see, you see that it's running. And the good thing is that the motor dampers, right now I'm only using two zones, not three, and M1, M4, and M6, those are the same wires that were on the original. And my original ones actually were set to open. Same connectors for the transformer. Now what was different down here is that I had to connect uh, the air conditioning, which is actually kind of spliced in here there is uh that's the common wire that's going to the relay outside for that system and then that red wire which is going to rc was originally spliced in with the yellow wire instead i just connected it to rc which a quick aside don't connect anything to the rc terminal if you do that uh what will happen is and thank you to john for pointing this out and a good thing i mentioned it if you connect that red wire, which is one side of the contactor relay that's outside if for the uh, central air system. If you do that, when you turn on the furnace and it calls for heat, it's also gonna call for cooling. And your furnace and your air conditioning is gonna run simultaneously, which is bad. It's even worse if you're doing it in the winter or where there's extreme temperatures. In this case, it was like 34 degrees yesterday and it could have damaged my central air system. Thankfully, I shut off the double pull breaker every year for my central air system so I don't accidentally hit it. But what you have to do is just copy the original wire configuration from the original board to the NCM300. That red wire goes to the yellow terminal. It's spliced in with the yellow wire that goes to the control board uh, inside the furnace. So don't do what I had just shown in a few uh, in the last segment connected uh, like you see here in the pictures from the original board finally over here at the thermostats uh pretty straightforward as well you just matched up the colors and uh i you i used brown as my common wire and i still have an orange and blue wire on each thermostat as extra i'm not using the o slash b for either of these since i do not have a heat pump and the dip switches i have uh, the only switch that is on to make things easier is switch number one. Every other switch is turned off. Eventually, I will get the temperature probe here. I will call up EWC and have them send out a temperature probe. But the good thing is I have heat and everything is, seems to be working properly. All right. And the final step for this project is we're going to install the SAS sensor which is the temperature sensor that is going to be feeding back to the NCM 300 control board here on the side. And this is actually being filmed in May 2022 when I started this project. It was actually back in March when uh, it was pretty cold out. But now we're about to start up the air conditioning. I wanted to do a final lockdown of this project so that it's ready to go. What I did was I drilled the hole in the center here, and this is right before the main louver that goes to the rest of the house, either AC or heat or heating. You got your AC coils right here and then right below it is the furnace. And they recommend 12 inches away on the supply plenum from those coils. So I think I'm as probably as good, gonna be as good as I can get it right before this louver. And it will be able to sense the temperature coming off the furnace and coming off the air conditioning coils. And I have some three conductor wire that I've run down here into the control panel. And what I need to do now is carefully install the SAS sensor right at that three terminal. And I'll get you a better shot of this with some light. All right, guys, here's a little bit better of a picture. 
as you can see as I move the camera I just installed the SAS sensor wires to terminals one and two I had three connector wire here and I didn't use the white wire so it's just off to the side there it's not polarity sensitive on how you hook it up so either one or two it doesn't really matter the only other thing that you need to do and obviously do this with the board depowered is that now you want to look at this dip switch array here and for my setup here if you have a forced hot air and forced air cooling with a oil fired furnace switch number one should be on which is set for gas and switch number seven should be turned on because I'm now using the SAS sensor. So all the rest should be off. And as mentioned in my last segment, this is the correct way to connect the air conditioning system. So the white and brown wires, the brown wire is common that goes back into the furnace panel here. The white wire is going to the contactor outside for the compressor. The other wire is a red wire, and that is going to be spliced into the Y terminal or the yellow wire where it is coming off of the system bus here. If you connect that red wire to the RC, for example, your furnace and your air, air conditioning is going to run at the same time. That can potentially cause damage. So don't make the same mistake I did. This is how it was connected on the old board. And I tested it out the other day. Works just fine. Finally, the recommendation from John is to set your low and high temp settings here. Now the low, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's right above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I set it to probably around 41, 42. You don't want to go below 40 degrees. And then the high limit temp, since I have a hot air, uh, forced air furnace, that temperature limit should be all the way up clockwise. I'm going to end the video here. I want to give a quick shout out to John over at EWC Controls. Thank you so very much for all the help. We spoke back in March of 2022. I'm actually filming this segment in May of 2022. I just never really got around to installing the sensor. However, uh, now it's the weather is really nice out. It's about 82 degrees outside. We're going to be firing up the air conditioning soon, probably later this week. I've already tested it and it runs great. Other than the wiring configuration issue that I made the mistake on with the outside compressor, that was really the only major difficulty that I ran into with this install. Pretty much all the connections on the old board can be copied to the new board. You just got to keep in mind that with the new Wi-Fi thermostats and the new thermostat configurations, just match the O to the orange, W to the white, so, and so on. And you shouldn't have a problem. And just understand and know which where your common wires are. I try to keep the color codes pretty simple and self-explanatory. That way, I wasn't going to get myself confused when installing it. But this should be pretty much ready to run in the next few days and for the rest of the season. If there's any questions that you guys have uh, with an install like this, upgrading from the old board to the new board, please let me know. Also, please feel free to reach out to John and all the engineers over at EWC Controls. Email them. They're very good with the customer service. I really would recommend them highly. You know, they helped me in a jam when I didn't have heat back in March, and it turned out great. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.